G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean. Um, if you're wondering what I talk about, I do tech reviews, tutorials, gaming and streaming. Um, today I'm going to be talking about five apps that you should consider getting for your Windows PC. Um, maybe you already have them, I don't know. These are five apps though that I put on every single Windows computer that I touch. Um, all of them except for one are free. So stick around, enjoy this video and if you like this video, chuck it a like. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike and uh, let's begin. All right guys, so I'm gonna take you through the five apps that I chuck on pretty much every single Windows PC um, that is in my own personal possession or that I work on um, in, some, in some shape or form. So to kick things off, um, I'm gonna talk about an app called Ninite. So Ninite is a really handy app for if you want to install or update multiple applications at once. So um, being that I've sort of been in the IT space for a long time and I'm always setting up uh, Windows computers, always reformatting and setting up my own, um, this is a really handy application for deployment um, and also just a great time saver for your own personal computer. So if you're like me and you're always changing like maybe your operating system or you're playing around with things, um, you can go ahead and basically tick for example, your web browsers that you want, messaging apps, things like iTunes and VLC, um, your Java runtimes, you know, if you've got your PDF readers for an office, you can chuck that in, um, any security essentials that you are regularly sort of uh, installing, and things like Dropbox and WinRAR and whatnot. Once you've done that and you've selected your, your preset, you click get your Ninite, and then what will happen, it was a download um, to your computer the I guess the file for extraction and the name that it gives it is the name of all the applications you selected so once you've gone ahead and press save it saves a tiny file which is only about 400 or 500 kilobytes and you can launch that and then with Nine Night it will start automatically going ahead and installing the applications you've selected so if we click show details here you can see it's got uh, Chrome, Java, Java, Qtpedia, VLC, Discord, iTunes, Essentials, uh, Security Essentials that is. And the cool thing about this is if it realizes that that program is already installed, then it will just go ahead and skip it. Um, but the other cool part about this program is that if you sign up for like the pro versions, um, you can do like you know deployment for an entire office you can have it automatically update the apps in the background you can monitor it as, a, as like a administrator um, but for personal use i find that this application is is really really handy so you can see here for example with vlc it's skipped it and it's gone ahead and said up to date so that way you know which applications already are there and which ones you know get skipped so that's the first application which is nine and that program is completely free and it is for windows 32 bit and 64 bit and just to mention as well that all these applications that I'm showing you are predominantly Windows applications there may be um, Mac versions out there but uh, just to be safe I'm gonna recommend all Windows based applications so VLC has been around for a long time now um, if any of you have ever watched a video file on a computer there's a good chance you've probably seen this witch's hat icon um, and you're playing it through VLC so you can google VLC media player and go to the official download page it's an open source player it's always being updated um, you can see here how many downloads have been completed 19 million 73,300 so far so you can see that it's a um, a widely respected application. It's definitely not going to you know, cause your computers any grief. It's extremely lightweight, so it doesn't actually rely on a lot of system resources. So even if you've got a very basic PC or maybe like a home media PC, um, you can easily run this application on pretty much all Windows and Mac operating systems. There's an iOS version. Um, if you want to donate to the Video Land organization, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but like I said, there's no obligation to do that. It's a completely free application. And the other cool thing about it is that the codecs are sort of all built into the program. So if you've got very specific video files, there's a good chance that this application is going to play it straight away without having to um, go searching online for you know, other codecs for, for like 4K video or 3D video. 
Blu-ray rips, all that kind of stuff is going to be included in the Video Land or VLC application. So definitely go ahead and check that one out. Um, and the application itself is about 40 megabytes. So like I said, pretty small application. The third application is an application that I've been using for a long time, which is called Splashtop. So Splashtop is essentially a remote desktop software. And if you're just trying to access another computer um, within your own network, you can actually download this application for free and it will allow you to remotely configure or remotely access and do whatever you need to do on another PC in the same network. And it's completely free. It will give you audio playback. It will give you HD quality um, streaming. Obviously, you know, depending on your network, that's always a factor. Uh, but if you've got a good network, it's a great application to have. And there's also a free iOS version. So if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, you can, for example, sit on the couch with your iPad and remotely log into your Windows PC, which might be in another room, and you can continue carrying on doing uh, work on your PC from your iPad. And all the shortcuts for like keyboard shortcuts, that all comes over onto the iPad itself. Now, if you want to upgrade to, I guess, a, pa a pack where you can um, access your computer from anywhere, there is the option to do that. So I went ahead and did this a long time ago and it only cost me about five or six dollars for life. So I'm pretty happy because um, after looking at the website here, it's $16.99 per year now. Um, and that will mean that you can access any of your computers that are signed into the application um, as long as they're connected to the internet. So if you're someone who travels a lot, um, even on a 3G or 4G connection, if your computer is turned on at home or at work, you can access that computer if you so wish. So not for everybody. If you have a very specific need and you need to always be jumping onto different computers um, and you can't always have those computers you know, right near, nearby, then this is a great application. And compared to some of the other um, remote desktop applications, it's actually one of the cheapest ones as well. And it's one of the only that will give you free local access, um, which is limited to five computers. Um, but they're a great company, been around for a long time, and I uh, highly recommend Splashtop. So Plex is an application for streaming uh, video files. So if you've got a computer and maybe you've got something like an Apple TV in your home, you can actually store a bunch of video files, set up your computer as like a media server, and then actually stream that video content over to something like an Apple TV. If you wanna see a tutorial on Plex and how to set it up with the Apple TV, I've done that. I'll leave a link uh, to that video down below. Um, but this is a great application, which is completely free. There is some benefits if you do go to the paid version in the sense that you get some online content that is exclusive, um, but you have to check what region you live in as it's not um, sort of, you know, the same for everyone. Here in Australia, if you sign up for Plex, you don't get, unfortunately, the US TV shows, you only get the local free to wear stuff. So for us in Australia, it's really not that good of a value, I don't think, um, but maybe if you're in the States or if in Europe, it might be better for you. But I mean, at the end of the day, the basic application is free to set it up on your NAS or on your computer or on your Mac is com uh, completely free. And again, they've been around for a long time. The last application is one that I stumbled across just recently. Um, and it's not Opera the browser, but it's the free VPN function within Opera. So if I minimize this for a second, and we go down to Opera, and I right click and open a new private window, what actually happens is then you have an option here which says VPN, which you can click and turn on, and it will automatically find the most optimal location. It will give you what your IP address is. If you wanna change it manually to a region that is closer to you, you can. And essentially everything that you do within this web browser is going to be encrypted from Opera through the VPN function. So if you're trying to access maybe a sports website to stream maybe um, American football or AFL if you're in another country, 
um, then this website will definitely help you get outside of whatever firewall that you might be behind. For example, if you're in China and allow you to browse if you were, you know, um, not in that country. So for anyone that's looking for a quick and easy VPN without having to install a third party application, then this is going to be a, um, a great program for you. And just for example here, if I do a Google search, and Google what is my location, we'll see that the result um, won't show that I'm here in Sydney, Australia, or show that maybe I'm in Europe somewhere. Now, another thing to consider when you're using a VPN is obviously that uh, your speed is going to be, you know, maybe a lot slower than what you would normally expect because with a VPN, essentially all of your network traffic is being sort of rerouted. And so it's going to be a lot longer to get a response from the server than if you were just, you know, weren't using a VPN. So if we do a quick thing here and say, what is location? It's going to get very confused. Google doesn't really know where you are. It can't get a region. So you might have to do one of these um, little check boxes to authenticate. So I'll just do that quickly. And this will happen every time. So just get used to that. Do a couple more. Put in my location. And it thinks I am somewhere by the looks of it in maybe Russia. Let's have a look. Don't know where this is. So let's click on this Google image. So based on the fact that like this is I think Moscow. And we've got London and England over here. So it thinks we're up near Russia somewhere. So um, obviously not in Sydney, Australia. It even isn't displaying the language in, you know, obviously English for me. Um, but if you're trying to get onto, like I said, a specific website, and you need to get outside of your firewall, then this browser will help you out. So there's my five applications. They're all free applications, except for, I guess, one or two of them, um, if you want to be picky, but you can download and install all of them for free. They do have free versions. And yeah, if you have any questions about any of these apps, then make sure to let me know. Cheers. Alrighty guys, so thanks for watching this video. You've now got five apps that maybe you didn't know about before that you can put on your PC and give a, give a try, see if you like them, see if you don't. I mean, who knows, you might already have a lot of these apps. Um, but like I said, these are apps that I put on every single Windows computer. Um, just because I feel like they're just essential to making sure that you have a great Windows experience. So thanks for watching this video once again. Um, chuck it a like if you liked it. Give it a dislike if you disliked it. Leave me a comment maybe down below if you have any thoughts or questions. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.